You can find the product featured in today's video and many more at Dan's Dinosaurs. Check out his site at the link in the description below and be sure to mention that Killer Shrew fan sent you. Now, on to the review. Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. Now, I know you are all still waiting on my top 10 scientific models of 2021 video. And let me just say first, thank you for your patience with that. But let me assure you, the only reason you are still waiting is because I myself am still waiting on a handful of figures to arrive. I just got word that my PNSO Triceratops and Iguanodon have reached the States finally. Finally, and as I understand it, the Beasts of the Mesozoic Triceratops has made it as well. So now it's only a matter of time before they make it to my doorstep, but in the meantime, I felt it was high time to start doing reviews again. I usually like to take January easy, seeing as I spend all of December, November, and even this year October putting together those monthly specials, so a break was much needed by the time the new year rolled around. That being said, now that it is a Officially February, it's time to pick things back up again, and I've decided to start with a PNSO figure, seeing as I have a lot of catching up to do with their releases. So here we go, it's Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. Now despite PNSO's rampant success, it would seem they're a company that is always improving in their artistry. This is evident in their theropod models, as we saw them go from very overtextured to much more subtly sculpted figures, and now even their ceratopsians appear to be receiving a similar treatment. However, if there's one group PNSO has nailed consistently from the get-go, it would be their hadrosaurs. It started with Audrey and Caroline in 2020, then in 2021 we got the beautiful Wyatt the Parasaurolophus, all with that subtle and refined sculpt work and, in my opinion, some of the best maintained paint from the promo images. PNSO would then breathe new life into this group once again when they gave us Ivan the Allura Titan. Now, the species alone is a novel idea, but you'll see in addition to having everything going for him that the previous models do, Ivan also comes with the fresh addition of a very unique and appealing rearing posture. You can see that he's been posed standing back on his hind legs and twisting over his left shoulder. This undulation to his pose is then emphasized by the slight offset swing of his arms and curve of his tail and neck as he cranes his head up to survey his surroundings. Now, although a quadrupedal stance is the exception norm for hadrosaurs, the occasional bipedal posture is almost certainly something that they could achieve in life, either for brief higher grazing or to survey their surroundings for potential threats. Even if this does result in the infamous quote unquote tripod pose here, it's nice to see PNSO representing this idea of select bipedalism in model form, and it also helps provide Ivan with a unique pose amongst their other hadrosaur dinosaurs. Doing a simple forward stride on four legs would get old after a while, and the rearing pose is done so pleasingly here that I don't even mind that it makes the figure tripod. Then again, I have always appreciated the imagery and gracile appearance of rearing hadrosaur, so perhaps I'm a little partial here. But speaking of elements to distinguish their models, something PNSO can be hit or miss with is coming up with interesting color schemes. It seems like they like to fall back on earth tones with dark stripes a lot, especially with their theropods, which results in a sort of homogenous look between the palettes of some of their models. Their hadrosaurs, however, have all had very unique color schemes from one another, and Ivan here is no different, sporting various lovely shades of purple across the flank which transition beautifully into a cream underbelly. These main tones are then broken up by dark purple markings along the dorsal region as well as some notable banding along the tail. Although there is the expected fall off in the complexity from the paint master, the application is still quite nice across the board, with lots of subtle transitions and tones across the animal, particularly in the limbs where you can see a nice gradient from darker to lighter purple. The markings along the tail also have some nice feathered edges, giving them the appearance of actual subcutaneous pigmentation rather than sprayed on hard lines of paint. 
all things considered, it could very well be one of my favorite color schemes to date from PNSO. And just the fact that it's purple makes it particularly noteworthy in my eyes. So that's the big picture of the figure. Going in for a closer look at the head, you can see that it has been rendered with the usual muscle forms and fine details. The eye is picked out in yellow with a black pupil, and something I must comment on is the fact that this figure appears to have some more prominent shrink wrapping going on across the face, which is a bit bizarre for PNSO standards. It certainly doesn't bother me all that much, but I know there are some people it drives up the wall, so I just thought I'd mention it. Of course, like Ceratopsians, the real point of interest on any Lambiosaurine dinosaur is the head ornamentation, and PNSO have certainly given that facet of Alora Titan an eye-catching treatment here. They captured the hatchet shape of the hollow crest quite well, then adorned it with a striking orange coloration complete with black markings. Now, this might put some in mind of the plates of their old Stegosaurus beaver, but I actually like it more on this figure. It's a nice splash of color to contrast all that purple, and it gives the piece even more visual interest in the most fitting way possible. Moving on to the neck of this figure, Alora Titan had a longer than average neck, and I feel like this craning posture helps accentuate that unique feature. All the tensing cords of muscle are beautifully rendered and have been saddled with some amazing skin detail. Whether it's tension lines leading up from the pectorals as the skin pulls tight, or bunches of skin forming with the turn of the neck and gathering over the shoulder blades, it's all so believable and lifelike in its presentation, and really helps to sell the pose of the neck. In fact, the movement of the skin across the board feels very well addressed. You can see how it sags and bunches on the left side as the thigh pushes it up against the torso, and how it stretches tighter over the opposite flank with the sharp curve of the body, which in turn provides you with a sense of the rib cage beneath. You can also see some nice tension lines forming as the right leg braces back against the ground, which also results in some bunching up skin at the base of the tail. Meanwhile, the tail itself features some nice muscle tones flexing with that slight curl. This also helps creates more folds of skin towards the base on the left side, while like I said, the right leg's positioning creates its own movement of skin on the opposite. As far as the integument goes, it's just as fantastic, boasting the fine sandpaper scales that we've seen on all of their other hadrosaurs up to this point. It may not be as crisp as the work on Wyatt, but it certainly gets the job done. Turning our attention to the limbs, the tensing muscle tones in those massive thighs have been very well captured and helped to sell the weight of the animal as it puts all of its mass onto its back legs. Again, you have got some lovely fine skin details forming around the joints as you move over the kneecap and down into the rounded calves and gracile ankles. The feet are nicely sculpted, and I appreciate the sort of dainty toes here, but it is unfortunate that the claws are left unpainted, instead just being colored that same dark grayish purple tone we see on the rest of the foot. It's not a deal breaker here, it's dark enough to work, but it does feel like a cut corner when you think about it. Meanwhile, the front limbs are proportionally shorter than the back limbs and are much more gracile in appearance, but they do feature their own nice muscle tones. As far as the hands go, you can see that they boast that single hoof-like nail encasing the third and fourth digits, while the second and fifth are left free. Moving along the underside, you can see the pulling skin coming up from where it gathers in the pectorals before making your way onto the underbelly where you can see a suggestion of the diaphragm beneath the logos there and as you make your way down past the skin folds forming around the legs and base of the tail you'll hit the cloaca which looks a little irritated here I must say and that was the sculpt of this figure overall another bang up job from PNSO but at this point what did you expect as far as the size of it goes, in a straight measurement from the tip of the tail to the tip of the beak, you're looking at around 8.5 inches long, or just under 22 centimeters. And it stands in at just under 5 and 3 quarter inches off the ground, or around 14.6 centimeters in that rearing posture. 
Now, if you measure along the sharp curve of the spine, you're actually looking at something closer to 11 inches long or around 28 centimeters in length. In life, a lower titan is estimated to be anywhere between 26 to just under 40 feet long, which would put this model in the 128 to 142 scale range. For a 135 scale model, you'd be looking at something that represents a 32 foot specimen, which seems well within the estimated size range for the animal. For size comparison, the first thing I have to do is bring out the other hadrosaurs from PNSO. From left to right, we've got Caroline the Corythosaurus, Audrey the Lambiosaurus, Wyatt the Parasaurolophus, and then of course Ivan is in the middle there. Even if they're not all in scale with one another, they sure do look great together and really just prove how gorgeous and unique the family can be while showing how good PNSO have always handled these kinds of animals. From the one wonderful sculpts to the unique color schemes, they really capture the beauty of these creatures. Now, I don't really know what else to compare this figure to. I don't have any other Allure Titans, and I couldn't think of any contemporaries to throw in, so I guess here it is alongside the mini Centausaurus, since that species is all but confirmed to be coming from PNSO at some point. I'll be interested to see if they keep outdoing themselves with these kinds of figures, but if their track record is anything to go by, a new Centausaurus from PNSO would surely be a crowd pleaser. Then for a theropod comparison, here it is alongside Schwanzi the Tarbosaurus, still one of PNSO's best in my eyes, and the two's posture works pretty well off of one another. It almost looks like Schwanzi has ambushed Ivan, and he is now rearing back in an effort to get the heck out of the way. And of course, the obligatory PNSO Tyrannosaurus Rex Wilson comparison. And you know, I'm one of the people who will stand by that figure through thick and thin, but I'll be honest, it's hard to look past the corncob texture we got on that piece when we see it alongside the beautiful and subtle skin work on Ivan here. For a final comparison, here it is alongside the PNSO Huanga Titan, because seeing that thing dwarf every other figure in my collection will never get old. And that's going to do it for my look at this Titanic Swan from PNSO. What a gorgeous figure of a very underrepresented animal this turned out to be. I love the pose, the paint, and the sculpt work. All of it just is so well done, and I think after four hits in a row, it just proves that PNSO really is at their best when making hadrosaur dinosaurs. I'm very excited to see what they do next in this regard, but as for Ivan here, I think he earns a Dynomite rating. As always though, I want to know what you guys think of this figure? Do you own it already? Are you planning to pick it up? And what hadrosaur dinosaur would you like to see PNSO tackle next? Drop a comment down below and as always thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take care out there and bye bye